I am really looking forward to today. Look at this for a beautiful setting. Saddington Reservoir, my local big water, and we're here doing a bit of feeder fishing. I want to try out a few different things today, baits, rigs, that sort of thing, ready for our world champs and feeder masters events that are coming up in the near future. Look at the effort that I'm going to. Just, just look at this. We're squelching through the mud to get to our setup. As you can see, we're all ready. What I'm going to do, get the rest of my gear ready and run you through my approach. So here we go, folks, ready to get going. We've already had a couple of casts and there's a few little fish knocking around. Now, today is all about getting bites, getting in the swing of things, reading your bites, making sure that all the kit's sorted and just getting into that mentality of big or small, catch what you can. Because I know that today we could probably cast a feeder a decent distance and we could probably have a decent day catching some bream, maybe the odd tench. But some of the matches that I've got coming up, it's all about catching smaller fish at shorter ranges. So I've got the distance sticks out, I've measured out 15 meters, and I'm just gonna plop a little feeder 15 meters out and just try and be efficient. Just try and come back with a fish most chucks. Like I say, big or small, it doesn't really matter. We've got a bit of um, a new ground bait to try out. We're gonna try out different consistencies of ground baits, see if that makes a difference to the stamp. And sort of like, just go through the motions. I can talk you guys through it while I'm fishing as well and just show you the little changes that sometimes make a big difference. So, like I say, I've had a couple of fish already on a lot of reservoirs up and down the country because the water is so low now. We've had a lot of, well, we've had hardly any rain all summer. A lot of the reservoirs are really low. For some reason, those fish love being in the shallows now. On these big waters, I've seen a lot of people that are casting to the moon, casting 60, 70 meters. The fish that tend to be in the shallows, especially those roach and perch. And this time of year, perfect time to try and target them. So, like I say, 15 meters is the, the distance that I'm going. I'm hoping to catch a lot of roach. Maybe we'll catch some skimmers late on, who knows? But that's what we've got to see. We've got to go through the motions. I've got a little feeder on. You can see there the ground bait's really dry. I'll talk you through that in a second. And we've just got on the hook, a single maggot. Again, we'll talk you through the baits as we get going because I'm itching to just catch a few fish and talk you through how we're doing it. So like I say, a little plop out, 15 meters. The ground bait that we've got is, uh, is, a, is quite a new one from Dynamite. It's called Silver X Naturals. And hopefully you can see, he's popped off. Hopefully you can see the sort of the ideal ground bait for, for, for what I want to do. You know by now that if you watch any of my other videos, you'll know that I love a dark mix when I'm targeting roach and, and other silverfish. I think it's non-offensive. I think anything will swim over a dark mix and they won't get spooked. And this ticks all the boxes. Nice and active. Loads of active particles in there and food particles, which is important. You don't want a ground bait to just sit there and just be a, a carrier for your loose feed. It needs to actually offer some food particles and there's food particles in there. So I think it's the ideal mix for today. You can probably see it's mixed really dry. Now all I've done is added some water to that ground bait and then I've pushed it through, through a ground bait riddle just to make sure that all the big lumps are taken out and all that water is evenly distributed throughout the mix. By pushing it through a riddle, you just, obviously those big lumps that are sitting on top, instead of chucking them away, if you push that, those lumps through the, through the riddle, you're adding that moisture to the other particles and just, like I say, distributing the, the moisture throughout the mix a little bit better. And you end up, hopefully as you can see, with a really fine ground bait mix. Mega active as well. Now, obviously, 
that active ground bait with all those particles is brilliant for attracting fish. You've got particles that are floating, they're hanging at all different points in the water column. And that means that you're gonna get plenty of fish in your peg. Catching them though can be another matter because to catch fish effectively, you want them feeding where your hook bait is. And quite often your hook bait's on the bottom. So what we're looking to do, at least for the start of our session, is fish with this nice dry ground bait. And then we've got our tub of water on our side tray. And if we need to alter the consistency in any way, it's a case of just adding a bit of water from, from that tub to our mix. And all of a sudden, we've got a much damper ground bait. that's just gonna hold fish a little bit nearer the bottom. We can slow the peg down a little bit. And hopefully that's gonna be the way of catching some quality fish. And also, if we do have an issue with missed bites from these smaller fish, it's a great way of slowing everything down. Sometimes these smaller fish, when they invade, invade your swim, they're a little bit scatty and they don't take your bait properly and you can have an issue with missing bites. So by slowing everything down, by adding that water to the mix, You, uh, you hopefully make your fishing a lot easier. I think what we need to do though is just have a few minutes just chucking in, attracting a few fish into the swim. And then we'll take it from there. Obviously every fish is a, is a little roach at the minute. Single maggots to bait. All I've got with me, because this is a little short session just to try a few different things out and just to get in the groove i've just got real small selection of baits with me i've got a few dead maggots put them on the hook obviously if, the, if this was a maybe a, a serious match i'd probably have a few floating maggots with me as well for hook bait but i've got a few dead maggots just out, out of the fridge and I've got some worms with me as well. I've got some worms up the bank and also I've just brought these down. I just want to make sure that I've got some hook bait. So I think a little bit of worm, a worm head or a little, little section of worm. It's a nice tough bait and fish, fish absolutely love it. So I don't really want to start chopping up a load of worms today for our little session, but I think for hook baits, worm head is one of the go-to baits for this style of fishing. It can also increase the stamp of fish that you're catching. Obviously we know that maggots are great for smaller fish and quite often worms are the bait for, for your bigger fish. Just missed that one. While the rig's out of the water, we'll talk through the setup. So we've got our no nonsense reel. That's an Apixa. It's a 55 size reel. We've got braid on the reel. That's O10 braid. And that braid runs straight through to our feeder link, which houses our feeder. And then we've got a little bit of mono just to act as a bit of a boom and our hook length. Now our hook length is 016. Robustness is the, is the name of the game for this sort of fishing. So 016 and the hook, even though we're catching really small roach, the hook is a size 12. Now in my opinion, bigger is better when you're trying to catch a lot of fish especially smaller fish, because once that hook's in their mouth, they have a real hard job of getting it out of their mouth. 
And that means that instead of those little knocks on the tip, that quite often you get with a smaller hook, you get a prolonged rattle as they struggle to get that hook out of their mouth. And it just gives you a little bit longer to, to pick up and pull into the fish. And obviously with braid running straight through to the feeder, everything's more, more direct. And everything happens a lot quicker. So you can see there, doesn't exactly look pretty, does it? But that is what we're casting out. So size 12, 016, the feeder is 20 grams. And that is how we're starting, but that's not necessarily how we'll finish. And, and that feeder might tra change throughout the day, depending on what we're looking to do. Looking, if we're looking to put different, ba different baits through, or if we're looking to put our ground bait to the fish in a slightly different way, you know, we can change feeders by doing that. Now, I've got on my side track a few little window feeders, I've got some really open cages. and they'll all come into play. I can't see the open cages coming into play today, if I'm honest, because I think cage feeders are great at, attract, at attracting fish. And it's quite obvious to me that there's, there's plenty of fish there as it is. So it might be a case of using our window feeders to sort of almost sneak the bait down to the bottom rather than have bait bits floating around all over the place. With a window feeder, you can pack the bait in quite tight and you know that most of it is getting to the bottom. You can sort of sneak the bait down. Well, I'm really enjoying my day. It's a fish, a chuck, or at least a bite of chuck anyway. And we've changed things slightly. We've, we've increased the stamp. I'm gonna say we've increased the stamp by a small amount. We're not catching those tiny, tiny fish that we were catching at the start. Every fish now is a reasonable size that I think in a match, I'd be quite happy catching. So let me talk you through those changes. The most important one that we've done is we've added some water to the ground bait. We said we were probably gonna to have to do it and we've done it. I've added some water to the ground bait, grabbed some water from that tub at the side of my ground bait, mixed it up. You know, there's no need to riddle it and mess around with it. We just want to get some water in, make that ground bait a little bit heavier, a little bit damper, and make sure it gets to the bottom. And that way, we know that the fish are on the bottom. Hopefully, we're going to attract some better fish. Now, we can nip the bait in the feeder a little bit tighter. And occasionally, you know, I'm even reeling in, we're getting bites really quick, really quick. I'm even reeling in with some of the ground bait still in the feeder. It's not a concern for me. It doesn't really matter. We're not trying to feed those fish. We're trying to create that column of bait going through the water all the time, that little plop on the water surface. And we don't want necessarily loads of food in the swim. We want the feeder doing the work for us. So. That's the first change. The second change is hook bait. We've switched to a little bit of worm head on the hook, still that size 12. And I just feel I'm missing less bites because of that. So although the stamp hasn't massively increased, we're still catching a lot of small fish. I mean, to be fair, that was the name of the game when we sat down today, just to get a few, few bites and work through the changes. I just feel that whereas we were catching the odd tiny, tiny fish and we're missing a few bites with maggots and that drier ground bait, by just fishing that little bit of worm and making sure that ground bait's a little bit more inert, we're just missing less bites. So those changes have definitely worked. Like I say, it's 
It's all about just getting bites. So I'm not really too concerned about the size of fish. The other benefit of fishing that little bit of worm on the hook is when you're catching a lot of fish like we are today, there's no need to rebait every time. So that little bit of worm head is a really tough bait. And we don't have to keep rebaiting every single chuck because as you can see, these fish aren't exactly fussy with what they eat. Now, before obviously we get you guys in the comments saying, oh, I could just fish a whip or a pole or what other way of fishing would be far quicker than this. You've got to remember that a lot of the matches that I'm taking part in are feeder only matches. So you've got probably at least 60 blokes on the bank, all fishing feeders around you. You can't fish a whip, you can't fish a, a pole or a waggler. And you've got all these other anglers as well trying to steal your fish. So it's not a case of just fishing at five meters out and making sure the fish come to you because the angler next to you is probably fishing at 10 or 15 meters, a little bit further out. As long as it's the right depth, the chances are they're going to steal your fish just because the fish will feel a little bit more comfortable fishing, feeding further out. So it's all about a bit of match practice for me today, this is. So we're still on that little, I think with that, that little feeder, we can do quite a lot with it. We can wedge the grab bait in it. We can lightly tap it in the feeder. We can do quite a few things with that little feeder. So I'm quite happy sticking with that little 20 gram sort of, it's a cage, but also you can fish it like a solid style feeder. So you can do a few things with that feeder. I mean, it's fantastic fishing. Great, a great way of practicing for venues where there's lots of fish. Now let's talk about the actual process because you can see it's not like normal feeder fishing where you you chuck out, you put the rod on the rest, you sit, tighten your, tighten your tip up and sit there with your hands folded waiting for a bite. It's all about being active. So I've got a rod rest in front of me, but we're not using it. casting out we land with the rod straight in front of us that means that when we sweep the rod to the side we're taking up the slack all the time so we want to take up that slack whilst all the time watching the tip and then as far as striking into bites it's just a case of a little sort of side swipe lifting into the fish and obviously in one movement we're reeling a fish in it's all about getting into a nice rhythm, this is. As always, I'm not, not bothering with a keep net today. I'm not gonna weigh my fish or anything like that, so there's no point chucking them in the net. So there we go, we're gonna chuck out, we hit the clip, we land the feeder in the water and we one, I've got one on the drop then. We land with the feeder in the water and make sure everything's tight. We want the, the rod tip almost pointing at where the, the feeder's landed. So look, still some ground bait in the feeder there. I don't mind, I'll chuck that out again. And then we can, then we can pull, it, pull the rod round, create that angle that we need. I've not done any, anything with the reel yet. I've just put the bare line back over. I've not tightened up. I've not set the tip with, a, with the, the rotor. All I've done is I've moved the rod. I'm sweeping the rod rather than using the reel to tighten up. So again, let's chuck out, show you what we're doing. Cast out, hit the clip. Rod straight in front, 
bell arm over and then gently pull the rod to the side with a nice bit of tension in the tip. And try and hit the bites. Just missed two in two there. Sometimes that's a sign to change the hook bait. We'll try and get the next one. We'll try and be a little bit lazy. So remember, not, not putting that rod on the rest, we're holding it. We're almost thinking like a float angler, but fishing feeder. That's what we're trying to do. And we're hoping that we never really get to put it on the rest. Because if we get to put it on the rest, quite often this approach is a little bit too slow. When we're looking for numbers of fish, talking sort of anything over a hundred fish I'm guessing this is the this is the way to to do it I also feel that just getting into this sort of habit is good when you're targeting bigger fish as well because quite often you'll get bites really quick in when you're targeting bigger fish so setting the tip in this way gives you a chance of spotting those bites as the hook bait settles and then you could in theory, put the rod on the rest. But what we're not going to do is chuck out, turn the handle of the reel four or five times, have a load of slack line out and risk not being in contact with our, with our feeder. We're trying to create a tight line all the time whilst being able to see a bite. So. At this point now, I could probably put the rod on a rest and sit and wait for a bigger fish, but I'm guessing we'll get a bite sooner rather than later from a little fish today. Might be a case of new hook bait, I think. You can always tell when you, your hook bait is starting to lose its effectiveness when you need to change change to a fresh bit of worm because you start catching either smaller fish or start missing a few bites. Put another another bit of worm on. I'm trying to thread thread the bait onto the hook a little bit so trying to get as much of the worm as possible. Obviously, a nice tough head of worm, dark end. You don't need a, a huge bit. See if that makes a difference. Look, bite straight away. This sort of approach has been really important in the team matches that we've fished this season. So fished a lot of venues where busy fishing has been the name of the game so Rudyard Lakes was a prime example I fished a team a big team event at Rudyard and to a man this was the approach fishing with smaller baits fishing for little fish and obviously you're less likely to have a blowout result when you're fishing in this way than if you were to sit there fishing for bream all day and we've got some fantastic anglers in our team that are all capable of fishing in this way so 
trusting your teammates, knowing that they're all going to do a, a similar similar job, you know you're halfway there. I think we'll try and catch a couple more fish. It's a great way of fishing, really busy, really. Seems a little bit bigger this. There we go, they're the kippers that we're after. And if we can catch a few of those, that's what we're after. I think that a cracking way to finish. I'm going to carry on. Hopefully we'll catch a few more fish like that. The stamp increases massively. Until next time, folks, tight lines.